Okay, we have any, uh, anybody needs an outline tonight? We're still in chapter 19. We'll get you on. We're in chapter 19 of Acts. We, we've had some uh, real good discussions and uh, a lot of things leading up to. This time that uh, Paul is ministering in Ephesus, and uh, last time we left off with with uh, the the presence of God, so to speak, as Paul was even sharing with us, and and uh, not everybody needs it, just some. Go ahead. Amen. Well, we, we left off with uh, verse 7, and we had a big discussion about certain things, but uh, I, I just wanted to reiterate, because what Paul's really saying, there, there's evidence of, of the Holy Spirit in our life, okay? So I just want to say, if, if, if someone doesn't know if they have the power or presence of the Holy Spirit, then they probably don't. Okay, so everybody understand that there's evidence. If somebody is questioning whether they have the presence or the power of the Holy Spirit, then they probably don't. So we have to remember that, that there's evidence of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And this is what Paul was making the point of, and that's why we talked about this. You know, um, have you ever grabbed a hold of an electric fence when it's on? What happened? Huh? Oh, I know, he did. Huh? Well, you, you knew it was on, right? Because you felt it. Well, it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. You're going to know if you have the Holy Spirit living within you. Okay? Did you going to say something? Okay, whether it's false or a rebirth. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it makes a difference, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you weren't here last week. 
You missed all of it. You weren't here last week. Ah, uh, you weren't here. You weren't here, so <laughs> that's how you missed it. But whatever, you what's your comment? You can share. It's like we talked last week that, that we, 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 look at, we look at what Paul says here. Um, he asked them what baptism they were baptized into. Okay, So then he started teaching them about the baptism of the Lord Jesus. And it says when, in verse 5 says when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So then Paul immediately addresses how the difference is. When Paul laid hands on them what happened? So we find immediately there, there's an effect of being baptized in the Lord Jesus. And that was some of what we talked before because they're, 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 he's clearly making a, a difference between John's and Jesus' baptism. So there's a difference between the repentance and then being filled. So, so there's clearly a difference here in what um, the Apostle Paul was even saying. He says, and, and, and he laid hand on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So, clearly he is now loving this with what? The baptism of Jesus Christ. Okay? It is the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's my question. The baptism of the Holy Spirit come upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So <laughs> it is a controversial thing. If you don't speak, if you've never spoken in tongues, and you have not received, and they go to this verse right here. Okay, so I want clarification on that. I, I frankly think that you can speak in tongues within yourself, and no, nobody around you knows, knows whether you have or not. So well, that's why I refer to 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, because... Paul clarifies all these things very clearly in the sense of, he says, I can speak with the tongues like anybody, but I, I'm seeking that you would prophesy instead. Because speaking tongues, he says, edifies oneself. But when you prophesy, it's edifying the church. Okay? That's what he teaches. So, it is, it, and again, for me, it's always been a rule of thumb. If it doesn't glorify God, I don't need to do it. If it's bringing attention to me, then I don't need to do it. And then it is probably about me if I'm bringing attention to me. But if I'm, if I'm bringing people to, to the kingdom or bringing glorification to the Lord, if it's being done in a way that it brings glory to the Lord, and you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in that, it's glorifying God. See? So, the, I think the problem comes in here is when, when people do resist the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But not only that, it's not even the gifts, it's resisting the presence of the Holy Spirit. That troubles me more than anything, where people resist the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because, as we've been studying, you know, the, 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 and, and preaching, God is spirit. So, I have to worship Him in spirit and truth. It has to be in spirit and truth. Because otherwise, I'm just worshiping in the flesh. And this is the trouble. Too many people worship in the flesh. That feeds your emotion. And it doesn't feed the spirit. Because I watch people dancing and shouting and hallelujah Next thing you know, they're outside the church doors and they're, they're living like the world. You can't tell me that was an experience with the Holy Spirit. But so many people play into that. Ooh, all, the, all the emotional. But where's the Spirit? I can promise you. They're, they're, and, and our people start to realize the difference 
when the Holy Spirit's presence, we understand what that means. And I'm so thankful our people are starting to understand that. Versus just this hoopla. The presence of God. That's why it's so important to me. The presence. That's what we've been talking about. The presence of God in our life. He, if, if the presence of God in my life, I can't lie. The presence of God in my life, I can't keep sinning. I can't let my flesh control me if the presence of God is in my life. There's clearly a difference. And this is what Paul's talking about. There's a big difference even between the baptism of John and the baptism of Jesus. See? So, bless you. I like that. Can you do it again? <laughs> so, so we have to... Yes? Mm -hmm. Not confusion. Spirit will not bring confusion. And, and there again, it has to bring glory to, to the Lord. Not, not something that's... That, that I've watched so many people say something to somebody, and, and that person's like, huh? If the Holy Spirit isn't speaking to me first, don't listen to someone else telling you anything. I promise you. Because the Holy Spirit will speak to the individual first. Then he might use somebody to confirm that to you. That's how you know it's clearly the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Because if somebody just throws something on your lap, it's just out of the blue, like, whoa. Then we have to check and say, is this really the Holy Spirit? Promise you, that's how the Lord works. That's how he eliminates confusion. If the Holy Spirit's speaking to you and you're in communication with Him, He's going to press upon you already. And then He'll use somebody to come along and say, Hey, yes, what I've been speaking to you is what I want you to listen to. But that's how the Holy Spirit works. See, it's not the other way. People get missed. Uh, 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 they don't understand. But that's how the Holy Spirit will keep from, from uh, causing confusion and eliminates the other thing. It has to be a confirmation. Then you know it's truly the Holy Spirit working. Same, that's why Paul says in Corinthians, I'd rather you prophesy. Why? Because that is an edification, not on self. That's on the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's to the church, the body. This is why, because it eliminates confusion. See? So anyhow, it's really not that hard to discern, but you bring up a good point. Because there is a lot of division about that very fact. Okay? So, so we, we have to realize as, as we read the Bible what Paul tells us. The difference is he's making it known as we talked two weeks ago. He makes it known there's a difference between the baptism of John, which is into repentance, and the baptism of Jesus, which is the indwelling and filling. Yes, Absolutely. Changes your life. And you better be careful, right? Well, I say, then you better be careful, right? She might start talking about Jesus every day. You might be looking around the corner looking for everybody to listen. That's what happens, though, isn't it? That's the feeling of the Holy Spirit. And if, if our minds and our hearts aren't drawn that way, then we have to say, okay, where is my heart? See, and we're going to get into some of this with, with the Apostle Paul in, in our next segment here. But I want, I want you to know that the, the, the idea of being the presence, I keep going back to that. Lord won't, won't let me go that here for weeks. His presence. His presence. It's not about me. It's His presence. It's not about us individually. It's about His presence. It's like we look with Moses and, and the children of Israel. How Moses was interacting with the presence. We can't change anything without His presence. <laughs> we can't overcome anything without His presence. But if I have sin in my life, His presence isn't close to me. People don't understand that. You can't play games with God. You can't just do what you want to do and tell God what he should do. No, 
I'm going to be humble and I'm going to confess my sin, get rid of my sin, repent of my sin, as with John's baptism. Then I have to ask the Holy Spirit to come and give me a born again experience which fills my soul, changes my soul, changes who I am, changes my interest, changes what I want to do. He changes everything about my mind because that's the Holy Spirit. A big difference, and Paul points it out. Yes? When someone becomes a Christian, like they say they have, and then they say they backslidden, is, is that biblical? Are there verses that talk about people who say they're Christian and then backslide? <clears throat> or maybe they were well, you guys are getting into the heavy stuff tonight. <laughs> but no, that's okay. It's a very good question because um, a lot of theological positions. Uh, again, this is church divisions over this theological uh, uh, question. Um, I, I tend to look at it in the sense of even what we're talking about. But we always have to remember we have free will. See, so, so um, this, this gets into, into the theology of, of you know, once I, I you know, invite Christ into my life and I become saved, then, then I don't have to worry no more. I'm Nothing else I can do to change anything because I'm saved. So now I can go do what I want to do. That's what lends to the mind of living like the world, doing these other things. But the whole time, we're forgetting we have free will. I can decide not to honor the Lord. I can decide to fall back into sin. See? So therefore, it begs the question, did, would you ever... Filled with the Holy Spirit. Were you ever born again? Would a born again person backslide and act like the world? I don't think a true born again person can. I agree. But, but we still have free will. See? We, but but when, when we're born again, there again, we're, we're, we're letting the, 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 the mind, the heart, the soul... Be, be under the, the authority of Jesus Christ. So therefore, if I do sin, the first thing that happens is, oh, I'm sorry, I failed you, God. Immediately go into confession. That's what usually you find with somebody who is truly born again. See? It's not that you won't fail in some way or do something, but when you do fail, you're immediately convicted by the Holy Spirit and says, you didn't do it right. So you're on your knees. That's the difference. But we still have a free will that we can still do that. See? But at the same time, if, if we have the presence of the Lord in our life, He immediately convicts us. Even words that we might say or how we might have acted, you know, immediately. It's like, you know what, i gotta, I got to ask that person to forgive me because I did not handle that right. You see? So that, that's, that's the difference. But, but I think we have to be careful that, that I don't have to be accountable. If once I say I, I'm saved, well, well, be careful because Satan can drag you down if, if you're not living and continuing to live in the presence of God. See? Because there, there, there's, a, there's, there's a growing mentality. And unfortunately, you know, you hear me say about it. But the growing mentality is you can cover your body with all kinds of stuff. And it's glorifying God. Well, that isn't what the Bible says. So if somebody does that, are they being convicted or aren't they? You know, it's interesting. I've talked to many who now really got on fire for the Lord and say, I was sorry I did it. I'm now convicted that I did this to myself. Just one example. Say another example is... Uh, th there's a growing in young people. They, they get together for Bible studies, and what they do together in Bible studies is they first have a drinking party, then they're having Bible study. I'm just telling you, th this is the mind that's happening. This is not God-driven. This is not God-appointed. This is all living in the flesh. And the same way if you go to church because you're, you're going to get handed a cup of coffee and a donut, and that, that's very happy... And I hear people talking, boy, guess what? I had my coffee and it was wonderful to be in church with this. You know what I feel like doing sometimes? I just smacking my head on the something. 
This is how far from the truth we have allowed Christianity to go. All in the name of feeding the flesh. If we want to see God move, if we want to be in His presence, I cannot live in sin. I cannot live in the flesh. I cannot seek the flesh. I can only seek the Spirit. Not my words is what the Bible says. True worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. God is spirit. That's what the Bible says. So if I have to feed my flesh to get excited, I'm not, I'm not seeking the presence of God. That's what the Bible it, it, Look, here, here's what he says. Let's go to Acts 19, verse 8. And, and, and here he's continuing his ministry in Ephesus. And Paul eventually leaves the synagogue and begins teaching in a borrowed school building. Ain't that amazing? This is what Paul did even, okay? He went into the synagogue, in verse 8, and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when they were hardened and did not believe, you think that happens? You think people get hardened and don't believe? You think it happens in a church? <laughs> ah, guess what happened? They did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude. They were in the synagogue. They were listening to what Paul said. They were hearing the truth. And it says they got hardened in their heart and they spoke against him and the way. This is the way of Christ he's talking about. And he departed from them and withdrew the disciples reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannius. And they, this continued for two years so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. So, again, what would we say from the beginning? Paul had a mission and he was instructed to do what first? He was told to go to the Jews first. He said he's going to the Jews first. But now, because they have uh, uh, hardened their hearts, so to speak, as it says here, have not wanted to hear, he's now going to the Gentiles. Peter also confirmed that commission, didn't he? When he went to the Gentiles and he spoke to them. So he, he, he spoke for three months, uh, preaching in the synagogue, again, directly to the Jews. Uh, the influence of the Jews who rejected the message, they drove him out once again, okay? And he resumed his teaching in the hall of a Gentile teacher named uh, Tyrannius, uh, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannius. So that's, that's where he is. Um, Paul held these meetings here. Um, some, some, some say historically from 11 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Uh, this was the time most people rested from work. So Paul had the opportunity in Ephesus to share. And it says he did this daily. So he's truly effort, putting the effort in. And, and daily, meaning every day. He's working at sharing the truth and getting the gospel into the hands of people, the minds of people. And then it says after he left the synagogue for two years, he continued. And uh, he carried this on and... And uh, this teaching in the school of Tyrannius. This is where he was at. And, and uh, it says all uh, who dwelt in Asia heard the word of God. So by himself, this is, uh, this is Paul. Okay, put the effort in. Uh, so he could equip other Christians to carry on. This is important work right here, right now. And uh, he, he described this also in Ephesians chapter 4. So we see more of this in detail. Now let's go to verse 11 and 12 here. And we're going to see some unusual miracles happening. Okay, so, so again, uh, this, this is proof of, of the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Verse 11 says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them, and evil spirits went out of them. So is this is this true? Do you believe this to be true? It happened in my lifetime. Happened in your lifetime. When I'm just a boy. Okay. People were sick in the community when they had revival. They 
brought in whatever they had, and they prayed them. Took them out, and the people were healed. Healed. Amen. I can testify that as well. There, there's been a lot of things, even even when somebody's not even in the in the in, in that same prayer circle or prayer time, and you speak their name or pray for them, they're they're being touched. So absolutely, and it's amazing that, that God is using Paul in this setting. And, and I, I question people who resist the power and presence of Holy Spirit, who don't think these things are common today. I question. Because if our God, if the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then why isn't He the same today? Why isn't He able to do the same today? It's all because of resistance. And it's all because of sin. The power of sin is stopping and hindering the, the moving, the presence, the, 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 the supernatural healings. That he can do. Just like we see here. Um, he used, unusual it says. Miracles by the hands of Paul. So, so Luke states that they were unusual. Um, gives an example. Of being unusual. By the, 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 the handkerchiefs or aprons. You know some, some cloth. That was uh, uh, in proximity. Uh, they they uh, could lay on a person. And even with, without Paul being present. But they prayed for that person. And because of the faith of that person, it was healed or, or they were delivered from, from demonic things. So that's powerful. Yes, Fred. Uh, just, I can't, I can't just take you about the night I came going through these back doors right on a Friday night. We had a prayer circle going on. That was a miracle right there. You prayed for Amen. my son and the family and his wife. Amen. It was dire straits. I mean, it was really bad. Really bad. Absolutely. Strong from the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you what, when you pray again, within 10 minutes, I felt at ease. Amen. Felt peace come down over me. Okay. And that trip to New Hampshire was a whole lot easier. Amen. And the response of that miracle was that the whole family sat filled that pew there within the next year. Yeah. Praise God for that. That's a miracle. And still alive. And that far away. See? <laughs> but this isn't that what Paul's talking about. This is, this is how we have to believe. I, I, I believe this. It's like I say when I pray, I'm already expecting. It's not that, that, that I'm just wanting people to hear me pray. You know, any of us pray. It, it, we have to focus on I am I am sure. Jesus is listening right now. And that's how I, I approach and we should always approach in prayer. I am absolutely sure he's listening right now. So if that's the case, then does that change my prayer? See? If I am sure Jesus is listening right now, I promise you that prayer takes a whole different dynamic than one you're just praying. See? I don't believe in just praying. I believe in praying with expectation. I believe in praying because it moves the hand of God. And because we know He's listening. See? And, and this is really what Paul's talking about. And, and why would he spend this time teaching? Why would he spend all this effort teaching? See? Doesn't this go back to the Word of God again? See? We get it backwards. We expect God to move without His Word. Okay? Did you hear me? So many people expect God to move without His Word. Well, no, you're just feeding the flesh. You get God's Word in the mix, now you're going to have a different approach. If you're presenting God's Word because it's His Word, and you're living in that Word, and you're expecting that Word, guess what happens now? God will move on that Word. That's exactly what's happening here. Word of God is presented. The Word of God is given. 
in truth, as it says with Paul. And they began to experience great things. Not only at first, but now again, as God worked miracles through the hands of Paul. But what was he doing? He was teaching the word. People began to believe the word. Now God acted on his word, as he always does. Okay? That's the some important piece. These pieces of material were nothing. These are probably, you know, material, uh, as it says, aprons, handkerchiefs, piece of leather, whatever. It wasn't that. They didn't have no healing properties. It was the prayer that was prayed. <laughs> and because of the word that was given. Now, these people experienced it. The handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body to the sick. Okay? We have many examples of this happening. We, we see uh, even the shadow of Peter, if you remember. People were being healed in Acts 5. We also see the hem of Jesus' garment in Matthew chapter 14. People were healed. Okay? The woman. We, we have all kinds of things that, that give this. But it's not. And it, 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 it probably if you let people uh, uh, run with it, they might start thinking it'd be some kind of fabric. You know, a certain type of fabric. You make sure you get that type of fabric and that's what it is. No, it isn't. It's the presence of our God. Okay? We, we, uh, 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 we, we, we think maybe this is even happening by accident. Uh, um, but th this is no accident. This is the Lord at work. He's confirming his word. He's showing the people who are believing. Yes, you believe my word. I will act on it. This is where it gets backwards. We got to have God's word before he will act on it. We don't feed the flesh and have God act on it. We feed the soul. Now God will act on it. He used unusual miracles in, in this, this kind of thing. That's what it is. Uh, miracles that, that they would have not have, have experienced ordinarily. But so what? This is God. Okay? God seems to like doing things differently than what man thinks, doesn't he? God does things differently in different ways. And of course, these were miracles. And it tells us very, very clear that God worked them by the hands of Paul. Why was it by the hands of Paul? Huh? He had faith. He had faith? Okay. Preaching a word. <laughs> By faith, he believed because he was sharing the word and people were hearing the word. This is why he wrestled with them about the word of God and truth. See, that's, that's the difference here. He had, he had a real conviction about the word. Let's continue with verse 13 here. We, we began to see the real story of other things creeping in. This is when the spiritual battles get real. When you start sharing the word and we start sharing the truth and you live with that conviction, you don't back down or you don't stop. You keep presenting the word the, the, the glories of heaven will overshadow the darkness of this world. And therefore, it also will lead to Satan rising up to try to cause the very confusion that the Lord eliminates. Yes. It did. Amen. Confirmation. See? It goes back to that. Confirmation. You always get confirmation. If God's speaking to your heart, He will confirm it. Here we go in verse 13. Then some of the internate Jewish exorcists. All this means is there is big opposition. Okay, and Satan is brought upon, upon these evil workers and it took upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil, evil spirits saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of Sekava, a Jewish uh, uh, priest who did so. The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know. But who 
are you? Isn't this an interesting statement? The man in whom the evil spirit was leaped upon them and overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This says a lot right here, doesn't it? When, when Jesus is present, you know what Satan wants to do? He wants to rise up. He wants to fight. He starts barking and growling and, 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 and throwing, throwing darts and criticizing. That's exactly what Satan will do every time Jesus is close. No different here. But look, at it's interesting. This is why I, I, I don't like pretenders. I don't like pretenders. I can see them. I can sniff them out in a heartbeat. It's only because the Holy Spirit reveals these things. Same as we have here. And I, like I always say, there's evidence of where I am in my Christian walk. There's going to be fruit that follows me if I'm really serving Jesus. It's always going to. It's, it, there's no question about this. So if I have done nothing in the name of the Lord, then I, I'm, I'm just pretending. I'm wanting people to, to pat me on the back. I'm wanting people to, to praise me and lift me up. If I have no evidence that shows I have brought someone to the kingdom, or I've helped someone in their life find Jesus, or if I have been a, a putting effort into helping somebody change their life, I, that person is a pretender. Pure and simple. Look at what it says. This is what exactly what will happen. Same as these Jewish exorcists. Okay? Who thought they were special. And they could do anything that, that Paul and everything else that was happening through the Holy Spirit. They thought the same because they, they, they had it together. They wanted to be of the same. Okay? But they're pretenders. It took upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. Look what happens. We exercise you by the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Now, you know what the difference is here? Look what he says. The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? What does that really say here? Huh? <laughs> They, they better run. They were charlatans. Charlatans. Pretenders. They thought they had something they didn't. And it's so many times in our world, people say these certain things, but they don't know Jesus. This is exactly the same thing that happens. As soon as there's a problem, as soon as there's an evil spirit, they're, they're already off the wall, going somewhere else with everything. Well, that isn't what the Bible says. If we are a child of God, even Satan knows who we are. That's why you hear me say, am I really a threat to Satan? These men ain't no threat to Satan at all. They're laughing. The evil spirits jumped on them and you know what happened. Okay, so am I a threat to Satan? That tells me something. He knows Jesus. Why? Of course, he's the son of God. Jesus is a real threat to Satan, isn't he? But you know what's interesting? He even knows the Apostle Paul. Why would he know the Apostle Paul? He's a real threat to Satan as well. See? And Satan should know our name if we are living for Jesus. He will know who we are. That's the problem with our world. We, we, we over glorify self. We over glorify the flesh. And, and therefore, Satan, he's not one big concern about us. But as soon as I become a born again, a Christian who has the fruits of labor, as Paul is doing, and I'm sharing the gospel, I am now a threat to Satan. And he will try everything to take you out of the picture. Yes. We get confirmation through the persecution yeah. of the world. Exactly. We're not being persecuted. Exactly. Amen. That's right. So that's further confirmation. Further confirmation. He will confirm that. See? So uh, again, the, these are Jewish ones that, that, that uh, the ex exorcist, it says, but um, we obviously see the results of what happened. Uh, 
the man, then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overpowered them. See, that says they have no authority. We have no authority. Only in the name of Jesus. That's why the presence of the Lord is so important. Because if the presence of the Lord is, is there, there's no confusion. It's only confirmation. And there's change. Somebody's changed. Okay? So, so when, when he's speaking here, the evil spirit said, I know Jesus, I know Paul, but who are you? That, that's a telltale. That really is a telltale statement. And, and I've always asked myself, am I a threat to Satan? And, and I pray that each of us are. Because we should be. We should be. And, 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 and if everything is, is uh, going along as without any trouble, without any opposition, then, then you're probably, probably are getting ready for a big one or you're no threat to Satan at all. I always say when there's a stirring and things are always stirring, get ready. The Lord's about to do something great. And he always has. When there's things that are stirred and things are happening, this you, you look at things and there's like, oh boy, there, there's some, some unsettling of things. It's like, get ready. The Lord really wants to do something wonderful. So we need to get it in that perspective and be ready. See? Um, any other questions on, on any of that? Verse 17, we, we find here in, in uh, uh, Ephesus again, uh, the renounced objects associated uh, with the demonic. Again, we're going to see, uh, uh, again, the spiritual battle that's happening that, that Paul talks about as well in other, other epistles that he writes. In verse 17, this became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. Okay, what we just talked about. Okay, the, the evil spirits jumped on them. Okay, this, this would be knowledge that would run rapid, wouldn't it? Think about what it, what it would be like if there was social media when something like this happened. They didn't have it. They just had word of mouth. And it went all through the region, dwelling in Ephesus. Fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord was magnified. Okay? So what did the Lord just do? Yeah, said earlier. Yeah. Confirmation. He confirmed. Okay? He, he confirmed who he is. He confirmed just like uh, uh, with the Abrams in the word of God. It was all confirmed. And, and people come to believe. He confirmed it. Same as here. The Lord was magnified. So these very things that just happened was confirmation that Paul was speaking the truth. See? It was, he was speaking about Jesus. And he was lifting up Jesus. I can promise you, Paul took no credit for anything. See? He didn't. He didn't want to be looked upon. He didn't want to be patted on the back. He didn't want to be noticed. He allowed the Holy Spirit to move. And, and glorified the Lord. It says, so many, uh, many who believed became, uh, came confessing and telling their deeds... Also, many of the, those who had practiced magic brought their books together, burned them in the sight of all. Amen. Wow. They counted up the value of them that totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. The word of the Lord grew greatly and prevailed. Maybe, maybe, maybe we need some book burns. I think we probably need some DVD burnings. There's definitely some decisions made there. Definitely. Selfish. Whole heart decisions. And, and it also tells us that this kind of thing shouldn't be in our proximity. That's really what we need to understand. This kind of, these kind of books, this kind of mentality, this kind of just playing these little games where it's, you know, it's cool or it's fun. Well, guess what? See, it's the same way with any graven image. It's the same thing of promoting self. It's the same as putting things that I'm worshiping around me, on me, in me, whatever it may be. This clearly tells us something. If it says they came burning, why would they, why would they burn these? Why would they burn the books? Who told them to? Conscience. Huh? Their conscience. 
<laughs> so therefore, it is the Holy Spirit. The presence of God. That's what I always say. If the presence of God is there, you can't keep doing what you do. Clearly, Paul didn't say get the books over here and burn them. They had a conscience. They had a leading of the Holy Spirit that convicted them. And that's what I say. If somebody is dealing with these kind of things, they are not listening to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will bring conviction. Teaching right and wrong. See? <coughs> that's the whole point. Now all of a sudden they realized it was wrong. See? The presence of God, the Holy Spirit now revealed, that is something not right. So if I'm allowing it in my life, then I'm, I'm, I'm suppressing the Holy Spirit. I'm really not listening to the Holy Spirit. Because, again, this tells us something. Because the, these ones, and you can imagine all the kind of stuff that was here and heard. But the value totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Do you know how much that would mean in our market today? Anywhere, there again, depending on the value of silver and things. But according to this, anywhere from five... Uh, uh, between one million and five million American dollars. This was no little thing. This is tremendous. This was citywide. See? And it's no wonder they experienced revival. It says the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. This clearly shows the end result of a people who submitted to the presence of God and to the Holy Spirit and they were led by conviction and they made it right. Can you, can you imagine the confession that's going on right now with these people? Wow. Wow. I mean, we're talking, we're talking a total change. We're talking about a real moving of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about confessing things within the soul that haven't, haven't been confessed. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit was real. That's why we need revival. We need revival. That's why we need the Word of God to get into people's ears. The Word of the Lord. Notice it says that. It ain't me saying it. What grew? The word of the Lord. This is the end of verse 20. So the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Grew greatly. Mightily. And prevailed. So again. This is evidence of the word of God. God will always confirm his word. But if I'm not speaking and sharing his word. How can he confirm it? This is a problem with Christianity. We are living in the Word. We're not presenting the Word. So how can God move mightily? So I need a gimmick to get people in the church. That's what's happening. No, I, I, I'm fighting against it. I've been fighting against it. And I will continue. I don't need a gimmick to get people in church. If somebody wants to meet Jesus, come on in. You want to hear the truth? Come on in. I'm not inviting you with a cup of coffee. We'll do that later. We like to eat too. But we need to understand the drawing only comes by the presence. The presence of Jesus. This is what Paul was saying as well. And, 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 and the word of the Lord grew. And it was only because, only because that Paul stayed there taught he taught month after month week after week day after day he was speaking and sharing for two years and the presence of the Lord was with him and now people responded to that word you see without the word this is doesn't happen Paul is being used by God because Paul was in the word Sharing that word. 
God confirms his word. See, we always have to remember that. You know, he will confirm in us. He's always going to confirm his word. So if you want to hear from God, ask him to speak to you. He confirms his word. So, so after that, then somebody might confirm. I know some of you have said to you, but it's already, you already understood what God was speaking. You already knew what God was speaking. So God used me to say and confirm what he was already speaking. That's how we know the Holy Spirit's moving. Paul the Apostle is a great example of the Word of God in action. We need to understand that. See? This is what brings joy to our hearts. Isn't it? So we're going to pick it up here next time. The next segment is the riot in Ephesus. Um, <laughs> and that's interesting. The riot in Ephesus will come up here. So, uh, and again, this is an example of Paul being guided by the Holy Spirit. Is another example. So, so I want you to see that. This is where we need to be. In tune with the Holy Spirit. This is why I keep saying, and I will continue to keep saying, we got to get in the Word of God. we got to present the Word of God. Because there's nothing that will keep a soul from going to hell except for the Word of God. And His presence in our life. If I keep ignoring the Word of God, then... then I'm going to be like these Jewish exorcists when it comes time. Oh, yes, don't you remember I prophesied your name? I know you, and I know you, but you I don't know. That's what Jesus said. So we, we, we need to understand there's a relationship with our Lord that overcomes this world. That's what he said he came, Jesus came to do. Set us apart. So, we have an opportunity, regardless of how the election goes, it, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't change who Jesus is. It shouldn't change how we worship. Will it affect how we worship? I believe. In the sense of what, what you might have to deal with. But it shouldn't change how we worship. It shouldn't change why we worship. It shouldn't, shouldn't change who we worship. But, but, you know, we, we, we then have to have faith in action. Jesus said, I'll be with you. I'm hanging on that. If I'm for you, you can be against, against you. Yes. have to remember that all through history how did God always get the attention of his people? Huh? Well, when you're talking about the miracles that he gave Paul, okay, the, the, the material things and so forth, he, he certainly helped Paul there by showing himself through miracles. Sure, but, but he there was always something that happened when they when they uh, decided to go their own way and, and we didn't need God anymore leading them. He always did persecution, judgment. It will always happen because God will say, okay, you ignore me. You don't want me to help you. You don't, you, you're not listening to what I, okay, I'll get, because this is free will. I'll give you the chance. You can go your own way, do your own thing. Okay, now it's persecution. Now much crying. Now much, oh, woe is me. Time after time, now it says, God says, okay, you ready to listen? Well, let it do for a while. See, this is, I believe this is what we're entering into. I really do. 
We've been so blessed that people take everything for granted and they, 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 they want to be. It's a growing majority that want to ignore God. And this ain't even party, party lines anymore. Even though, even though to me there's clearly a division between parties in the mindset and interest as well as listening to God. But we have to remember, God will always give us a choice. As a country, as a nation, as an individual. And, and if our country decides majority is another way, that's what it's going to be. Do you know what? That's prophecy. I, yes. I, I, really, I really believe that the reason we're in the position we're in is because the churches have been dead. Yes. Okay. Exactly. It's not works, it's dead. Exactly. So when we leave this, when we leave these doors and we don't say anything about Jesus uh, to anyone until next week, we are dead. Yes. We are dead. And that allows people like who may Well, it's like we said this morning, you know, you quoted John MacArthur, and I, I just uh, sent you a statement that just did fun, but to me, to me it's the same thing. If somebody believes in abortion, I can't vote for that person. It's that simple. So therefore, if I'm a Christian, how can I vote for someone who promotes abortion? How about someone that says I'm going to take everything related to referencing God off of our buildings, yeah. our monuments, our money, exactly. see everything. I'm going to do that. That's what this part is. Exactly. Yeah. You can't take it out of our hearts. That's right. You can't take it out of the building. Not out of the hearts. Exactly. People That's right. Well, I'm glad we got somebody like Kathy keeping them bold, them Booths under control and people under control there. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? We'll pick it up here next time. And it's it's uh, going to be a blessed week for most of you. I'm so happy and thankful. On November 2nd, we had snow. That was my blessing. That was your birthday present. Praise you, Lord. Hey, that was your birthday so, present. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll take it. All right. Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. You are wonderful. We glorify you. We lift you up and praise you because you are our God. You are our, our Savior. And you've come to this world to show us. And I pray, Lord, we would not resist you in any way. But allow you to work in our life. Allow you to work around us, our territory, all around, everything and anything. We ask you to work. We ask you to do. We ask you, Lord, to show yourself. And we praise you for it. And we thank you for your mercy and your word tonight. And may we take it with us and allow you to work in such a way as Paul. We pray for it, Lord, and ask you. In your name we pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen.